Hey y'all, thanks for dropping in. It's Steve with SBL Games. Today we're going to cover a tutorial on a PS4 Slim. Um, you will want to pop this up. That will be the very first thing. But before we get into that, these are the tools you'll need. A Phillips head and a T8 driver. I also strongly recommend having an old toothbrush handy. And then me personally, I like to use a barber's brush. I could get in there real quick, dust stuff off. It's strong enough to get in there but it's soft enough where it's not going to rip or damage anything or scratch anything up all right so anyhow moving forward the first thing you want to do is pop this lid up that will come up and off if there's any dirt or dust then you just clean it out you can use your toothbrush if you don't have a barber brush all right now this takes a slightly smaller screw than the rest so be sure to keep that somewhere handy uh there's also two screws here on certain models of this one, there'll actually be four screws. And then you got the two T8s here. Those will be holding in this. Then there's a T8 here, and then two Phillips head screws here. I've already removed those, it was recording, and then for whatever reason it stopped recording. Kinda sucked. Anyhow, this cannot come out quite yet. Um, we actually need to first get this off, because that will give us access to the screw holding the hard drive in. So we'll go ahead and get that out. Now the entire hard drive could pull out. There's like a little ribbon, I guess you could call it, type of thing. I don't really know what you'd call it. There we go. So you pull by that ribbon, that whole hard drive will just pull right up and out. And then now we're going to need to take our T8 to the screw right here. Come on. And that will come off. All right, now that we've got all those, and be careful not to damage this antenna, by the way. Now that we've got those, we can pull this up and off. It'll slide towards you. This one is relatively clean. I don't know if they cleaned it already or what. A lot of people, they'll clean it the best they can before they finally decide to bring it to me. Yeah, they've been in here. I see we got uh, screws in the wrong places, things like that. But anyhow, so we unplug the cable, we unplug the antenna. And all these cables here we'll need to unplug as well. All right, now there's two tricky screws that are like in these little holes right here. And it's preferred to have a magnetic driver, but even then it's uh, one use extreme precaution. I made it look really easy. I've been doing this forever, almost 20 years, but those is pretty much get all these screws that you see, all the black and silver screws. They're all around the board, or not board, I'm sorry, all around the uh, heat shield here. Just keep an idea of where ones go, like these, and these, for example, are more of a smaller, flatter screw. And then especially since this person put stuff in the wrong spot, you want to make sure to know where the screws go. So, let me see here. Well, let me get these, uh, let me get this one out real quick and maybe I could use that. Okay, so if you see, that one has a bigger hole. It's because that one takes that uh, silver, longer, coarse thread screw versus, let me take one of these off where the black one goes. When you have one with the black screw, you can see there's like a whole nother inner shielding that you're screwing into. And that way you know pretty much it's going to be the uh, smaller black screws. Or what a lot of times I recommend doing, if, if this is new to you, um, take pictures, man. Take a picture before you take any screws off, you know? That way you can quickly reference the picture and know where the screws go. Um, when I first started working on cars, I used to be all into cars and stuff. I used to always do my own repairs. I used to label everything. I would wrap a piece of tape around it and I'd, I'd label it. One or one A, one B whatever I needed to label it. And I would also take pictures. <laughs> and that way if I got stuck, I didn't know where stuff went, then I could go back, I could reference the uh, the photos and 
and use the labels and stuff. But this is kind of boring to a lot of people, so I'm going to skip all this unscrewing. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. We haven't been getting much activity. I have a lot of stuff I'd like to be giving away. But uh, I can't really do that until I get enough activity. So if you guys could drop a comment, hit the like, tap that subscribe button, hit that bell icon to where you get all the notifications. Don't miss any new repair videos. But I will be right back. And we are back. So yeah, I just undid all the screws all around the edge, all right here. Just all the screws. And remember, there's those two that go in those holes there. Now, you also disconnect all the cables, the fan, the uh, antenna, and this whole heat shield will come right off. Usually we'll give it a good dusting with the uh, barber brush or toothbrush. See, it's uh, brisk enough to brush and you know get the dust out of there but it's soft enough to where it didn't fling those pads everywhere <laughs> all right so now you see you got that all cleaned up we'll just set that to the side we're going to need to go ahead and uh, undo these two screws these are going to be holding in it's basically the x clamp but for the playstation and then uh something i like to do is when i put it back together i like to bend this and what that'll do is that puts a little extra pressure and then when you actually tighten it back up, anything overkill, it'll just bend back. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, so now that we got that, we want to make sure all everything's disconnected. So one of the things that's easy to miss is this right here. So let's go ahead and carefully lift this so we could get access to this and disconnect it. That's uh, really on there. And by far, patience is, is the virtue. Well, patience is a virtue, but by far, patience is uh, what you need to do this kind of work. Because it will test you. It will make you want to rip your hair out sometimes if you uh, aren't careful. <laughs> hey, there we go. Okay. So just remember patience you guys patience if you feel a bunch of resistance there's something connected so for example i almost got, my, got ahead of myself right now uh, once we disconnected the screws that were i believe the screw that goes right here ah, it's hard to tell without that shield on i need to visualize here Boom. No, okay, so the screw that goes right here actually goes into the power supply that's on the other side. So once you've undone that screw, then you could do the power supply. And the trick with the power supply is to get in there, you wiggle up, straight up, and then... Uh, because it's connected to this and then there's also this antenna so we want to disconnect that antenna okay now it did break so I'll go ahead and replace it although I think that they likely did it opening it up <laughs> anyhow then we flip this over And then we're supposed to remove the shielding. That's why another thing too I recommend is when you watch these videos, watch them from front to back a couple times before even doing the repair. You know, get an idea of what's involved to where maybe if the creator did make a mistake like I did, that uh, you could be prepared for that and not make the same mistake. All right, so there is a lot of uh, dust build up in here. I'm just going to hit it with the toothbrush. But essentially the cause of the overheating comes down to the thermal compound being worn down and more importantly the dirt and dust buildup. So god they got stuff 
all over, man. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they broke that antenna. Or they left it hanging by a thread, because I've never had that break like that on me. Uh, <clears throat> Alrighty, so now that we're in here, there's silver screw here. And that's it, just that one screw. And then now this whole heat shield will pull right out. And that was the cause of the overheating. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. All right. We're still going to have to give it a good cleaning. So I'm going to clean it real quick. A lot of people like to recommend the Can Air. I do not. It is one of the worst ideas or uh, recommendations one could give. If you actually take the Can Air and you spray it in front of you, but left to right or right to left, depending on if you're uh, left or right handed, then you can see a fog of moisture inside of the puff of uh, air that you spray. So basically what happens is that that moisture gets into the system and then now, as you guys know, wet sticks to dry, dry sticks to wet, however you want to say it. So now it's going to build up quicker. And then as far as the air goes, you're literally just moving dirt around on the inside. You have to remove the dirt from the equation like we're doing here manually. It's really the only correct way to do it. But anyhow, we want to clean up the fan. So we will want to go ahead and disconnect it all the way. There are two screws holding it. And then the whole thing will pull out. Pretty dusty, so I'm going to give it a good wipe down, brushing, whatever you want to call it. Good brushing with the screwdriver here. And then we can move forward with the repair, which... We're actually about halfway done, believe it or not. So it's not really that difficult of a repair. It's just having enough time to do it and patience is a huge one. Patience is a huge one. So it's pretty dusty. There's a lot of dust bunnies flying everywhere and stuff. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, but you know, the cleaner the better, obviously. And then kind of a, while you're in here, might as well just get the last little chunkies and stuff that are remaining in there. Because the cleaner it is, the longer it will stay running smooth. And uh, it should last you a good two or three years. I recommend about every two years to just go ahead and set up an appointment and come out and see us. Give you the good deep cleaning thermal compound replacement. We're actually going to be releasing NFTs very soon here. There's going to be obviously a limited number of made or available for sale, but they will have different perks. Uh, there's going to be, <coughs> excuse me, there's going to be like the basic one, <clears throat> which you get a, I think it was 10% off. And then there's going to be like a gold one. It's going to be our logo, but gold. <sighs> and on that one, it's going to give you, I think we agreed on 15% off. Plus you could actually get a free deep cleaning compound once a year. So if you really want to stay on top of it, you could do that. And then down the line, it's going to build value. So you'll be able to sell that to someone else and make a commission. And then they will have it for a while until they sell it. But anyhow, that's pretty much your job. Um, as you can see, it's not perfect. Some of this stuff isn't budging. The main thing we need to cover before we call this a wrap is we need to change out the compound. So I'm going to go ahead and 
put the fan back, kind of start rebuilding so we could get to the compound and finish the reassembly, finish the job. Hopefully you guys had a good time watching this, enjoyed yourself. If you're not following along, maybe it was uh, just fun to watch, hopefully. Either way, just like, subscribe, comment, let us know. We uh, would really like you guys to, you know, have enough activity so we could start hooking you up with some free stuff. <laughs> Anyhow, so I went ahead and cleaned up the heat shield. <clears throat> we will want to make sure these do not get cramped in there. And then I don't know if you guys remember, but there was a screw in that corner holding the heat shield in. So got to put that back in. Bada boom. <coughs> I know I'm going to probably have to pause it because I got to figure out what the hell they did. Because it's missing a bunch of stuff and that's not good. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, I'm going to have to pause it. They're missing thermal pads and stuff. Alright, and we are back. See, so yeah, I just had to basically round up some pads. There were some that were damaged, some that were missing completely. And those are pretty darn important. So we didn't want to leave those out. But now we can move forward. So I've already cleaned up the compound from the heat sink. We just need to remove the compound from the... APU. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and we'll put a fresh application of the compound and then all we got to do is reassemble and the job is done. So it's another satisfied us Billions client. That's what I always like to say. All right, so now we got that. Perfect. So you want it nice and clean. I'm even going to wipe it with a clean rug on the chip itself. And then blow off any dust. And then now I put the MX2 thermal compound. There we go. I always put more than enough. People are probably going to gripe in the comments, but that's how I do it. It's not going to hurt anything if you put too much, but it will make a difference if you put too little. So I figure putting a little extra won't hurt anything. Now, as we're putting this in, just make sure none of these cables get trapped underneath. We want to make sure to plug this in here. That actually ends up connecting to the power supply unit. So it's pretty darn important. If you don't plug it in, it's not going to power on. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so that concludes that. Now we can go ahead and put the clamp back into place. And I already pre-bent it. You don't have to do that if you don't want to or if it makes you uncomfortable or whatever. But I've been doing it for years and I can tell you that there's no negative effects from doing so. Alright, so we got that one slightly in. It's not tightened all the way because, as I explained earlier, it's going to unbend anything extra. It's going to unbend it. Alright, so that's all in. Good to go. Now we can go ahead and grab the other shield. Oh, of course. Damn it. He still, he still appears to be missing one, but I remember in the beginning of the video. Hmm, I must have borrowed one from there. Uh, let's see. No. All right, so we're going to have to improvise. So this is also useful information. So let's say for some reason 
you accidentally lose one. This situation was a little different, but let's just say you lose one, okay? In this situation, what you want to make sure to do is take one from the center to put on the end. You could have center piece missing, and the concept is that with these ends being held up by these pads, the metal connection is not going to touch on that point. So that's one thing you could do, but give me one moment, I'm going to have to fashion a, a replacement or find a replacement. Well, I was really hoping to be able to find an extra, but it looks like I used all my extras replacing the pads that were missing on the inside. So we're going to have to be okay with this, which I don't like to do unless I have to, but in this situation I have to. Anyhow, I can go ahead and put this shield back on. And if you all remember, this is where it gets a little tricky. Uh, make sure these don't get clamped in there, trapped in there. All right, so this tricky part is with these small black screws. <clears throat> if you all remember earlier, the one goes in here. And then one goes in that hole. Those are really tricky. They suck. Whoever designed it, they designed it to try to stop people like me <laughs> and DIYers. But anyhow, so if you remember earlier, oh no, that sucks. I'm realizing they lost that metal clip too. All right, but if you all remember, there is a small difference in the holes and that is what you could use to tell which go where. Like these bigger holes right here are for the silver screws with the more coarse thread. And then if you guys remember, there are one, two, three, four of the short fat screws oh <laughs> excuse me that was nasty oh. all right so the short fat screws go here 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 and here you want to make sure to put those in the right spot where you're not forcing or damaging stuff and and we will be able to get those cables all plugged in and pretty much be good to go. All right, so all those coarse ones are in. Um, we could actually plug these in too. Yeah, I'm just noticing a lot of damage. They damage right there. This uh, connector is chipped. I'm gonna have to let them know all the damage I discovered. And uh going to probably have to sell them a replacement antenna because that antenna was damaged so bad that it literally just fell apart when I went to remove it. It's a good thing I got it on video. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and screw all these screws in. I just wanted to be very thorough on what screws go where. To where you don't make any mistakes. So on this model there's a little metal clip. It kind of like a like the top of a field goal but uh, it goes into two holes and in the center there's a hole and that's where one of the screws goes in right here. Uh, it appears that they lost that unfortunately. But when you're doing it, just make sure you do not lose that. Otherwise, you won't have anything to thread into right there. And it also helps with properly grounding. But anyhow, now that we got that there, um, we could actually flip it over. But before we flip it over, we want to make sure everything's plugged in. So there's an antenna that you need to plug in here. You gotta make sure that the fan is plugged in here and all these ribbon cables are plugged in. This particular one right here has a clasp you gotta do and then put the cable and then put the flap back down. 
And you could actually put this beauty cover on. For whatever reason, it's usually more difficult to put on than take off. There we go. Now this will flip over. Alright, now if you remember, I'm just going to pull the socks after I place it anyway. But if you guys remember, this goes here. This goes here. This goes here. And then you'll need to put in the power supply and then the beauty cover and we're done. Yay. Um, I'm going to have to skip the step with the antenna because they damaged it to the point that it broke when I went to remove it. But be sure to plug that in as well. Um, where did my power supply go? There it is. All right. So on this, we plug in right here. Let's make sure it's all the way in, nice and snug. Then normally we'd plug in the antenna right there and make sure it's all routed along. Here, there's like a cutout for it. It goes in there like, like in there like that. But this piece obviously goes right here and then this just to plug in right there. All right, so now we could put that in. And again, normally we'd have this, and then we'd have to route it through that little candy cane shape cutout. Then this piece, well, it won't go because it's all tweaked now, but this piece will go uh, like that. And then if you remember, I told you to set that little screw to the side, that one screws in, holds it down. And then this shield goes here. These go here. The longer one on your right. From what you guys are viewing, it'll be top view, so it'll be your left. Then there's these two Phillips heads. Tighten those down. And then you could slide the hard drive back into place. It literally slides in right here slides right in then we could put this screw back on and then we could put that one black screw in the back right here we could slide this back on another beady cover and then we put that last beady cover on goes from back to front and there you go Case closed. Thanks for dropping in. Steve with SBL Games signing out.